Hey, good morning everybody. Uh, good to be with you today. Uh, it's Pi Day today. 3.14. 1 Pi. Uh, I guess Pizza Pie or Apple Pie or whatever. 3.14. Uh, what they call Pi Day, if you didn't know that. So, happy celebration today. I'm sure you're really excited about that. Uh, indeed. I know some people are. Uh, well, let's see who we've got jumping on here this morning. We've got one viewer so far, so welcome. Glad to have you on. Uh, let's see who we get going uh, today. Uh, morning, Lou. Uh, we've got five on now, so that's great. Uh, and there's Joey. So shalom, shalom. Morning, Sue. Nice to have you with us. Hello, Joyce. Good morning to you into yours all right they keep coming so <coughs> a little rainy thursday morning i don't know if it's going to keep raining today hi tom and michelle good to have you on board this morning uh, hi jennifer and deborah lynn deborah lynn Um, uh, well, welcome, welcome all. Uh, we'll continue our look today at the, uh, the book of Matthew. We're in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, if you recall, Jesus had just talked, uh, about the hypocrisy of the religious folks, uh, and, uh, really, really called them, them out, um, and, uh, you know, in the same way, kind of calls us out, uh, you know, when we, when we place more emphasis on the religious rituals than we do on what they point to, uh, Jesus is going to call us out. Uh, so today, um, you know, as Jesus calls, out, calls them out, I, my question is kind of, does anybody, anybody even listen? Um, does anybody listen anymore uh, <laughs> to anything? Um, I, I wonder if the, you know, the religious leaders, uh, they obviously didn't listen a whole lot to Jesus because we know that they had him crucified. But Jesus spoke. He spoke the truth in, in love. Uh, but um, not everybody was willing to listen. And I think that's true today. Uh, you know, I ask the question, does anyone listen anymore? You know, there's so much noise out there, so much to hear, uh, and you don't know who to listen to, or maybe uh, you don't want to hear it at all, so you put in your earbuds and you just block out uh, what the world is saying or what anyone else is saying because you just don't want to hear it. Or maybe, maybe uh, it's so easy for us to not listen because we're just stuck in our own head. Uh, we have just said this is what I what I I believe this is what I'm listening to and I'm not going to listen to anything else uh, come hell or high water this is this is it and we just don't we don't want to listen we don't want to change even though we know we need to listen and hear and, and change now the good news for us uh, even though we live in a world that doesn't listen even though we are people who often don't listen um, we have a God who listens to us. Uh, in fact, uh, we have a God who hears our prayers. Uh, he hears our, our prayers. And um, the, the reality is um, he, he always hears them. He sometimes answers yes, and sometimes he answers no, and sometimes he says wait. Uh, but he does hear and listen to what we have to say. In fact, the scriptures say this very clearly. From Isaiah chapter 30, verse 19, it says, The Lord will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. The Lord is surely, the Lord will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears, he will answer you. And then from Matthew 15, Jesus answered the Canaanite woman, 
Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. Now, I find it interesting that uh, Jesus Jesus' response to our prayers is based on our, our faith. Uh, that's what we see here in Matthew 15, 28. And, and, and here's the thing when it comes to faith. we got to trust God no matter the, the answer because we know ultimately the answer is our, our good. And we're going to see in this reading for today, uh, as Jesus kind of shifts gears, that we need to be people who trust him through the ups and the downs, knowing that in the end, God has good in store for us. We can trust in him. And we have to start living like that. We have to be people who are living by faith, even when it's hard, even when it doesn't make sense, even when we rather not listen. Uh, we can be people who listen and live by faith. Trusting, ultimately trusting in God's plan for, for us. Trusting that he wants good for us. Uh, trusting that he knows what he is doing. And when we believe that, when we live by faith, it starts to show in our it starts starts to show in our lives too. We can be examples uh, to others. So as we switch to chapter 24 today. Um, it's interesting because G the disciples come to Jesus with, with the question. Uh, and it's a question I think that all of us have, but ultimately he doesn't give an answer. Um, but what he does is he calls us to listen to him and to trust in him and live by faith. We can trust in him. We can trust in him. So here's what... Uh, what we what we what we read and, and learn as we turn to Matthew chapter 24 verses 1 through 25 it's a long section but I think it's a section that was in, it was uh, it was uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for it, it was it was a section of scripture that was Identify, uh, identifiable to the disciples as, as Jesus spoke these words, but it's also identifiable to us. As we, we have these same questions and, and recognize that Jesus answer, listens and Jesus answers. It may not be in the way we want, uh, but, but Jesus says, basically, you can trust in me. Trust in me. It's applicable to the disciples' age. It's applicable to us. So Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its building. Do you see these things? Jesus asked. I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. Now you got to understand the implications of this. It had taken 70 years to build. The stones were huge. The buildings were magnificent. Uh, for Jesus to say that it was all going to be destroyed seemed like an impossibility. All right. Uh, now, there's a couple of things going on here. When we talk about the temple, we're talking about that structure, which does 70 years after Jesus' death, is, or 50 years after, 40 years after his death is destroyed, 70 A.D., the actual temple by the Romans, they come in and they wipe it all out. Uh, but he's also talking about himself. Remember, he is that temple, destroyed this temple, and I will rebuild it in three days. Um, so they're impressed with the buildings, uh, but Jesus says, well, they're going to be wiped out. But even more impressive is what's going to happen with me. I'm going to be killed and in three days rise again. Verse 3, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him in private. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? So the Mount of Olives was on the opposite side of the temple, so they were looking across the Kidron Valley in, in, onto the Temple Mount and would be seen looking across as they ask Jesus, when is this going to happen? <laughs> uh, when will... When will uh, when what will be the sign of your coming and what will be the end of the age? So 
here's how Jesus responds. And it's the same kind of question that we have, too. What will be the sign of your coming? When's the, the end of the age going to come, right? Now, it's interesting because the things that are applicable back then are still applicable today. So basically, this next word is so important. Watch out. Watch. Be ready. That's what Jesus' message is here, is be ready. We don't know when the end is coming. So, Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you, not, uh, you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. So there's going to be a period, right? A period of time where things are going to be happening that are going to be a warning to us that the end that that the end is coming. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. That's not the end. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the roof of his house go down and take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world unto now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. See I have told you ahead of time. So Jesus uh, Jesus listens to his disciples and he, he shares with them what it will be like at the end of, of time. Uh, and so I think it's important for us to be people who listen to him. A couple of things stand out to me as I read that section. Don't worry. Don't worry. Trust me. Trust me. All right. Now, the disciples see it play out before their eyes. The temple is destroyed as Jesus is crucified, but rises again. Uh, it was a terrible time. It was a terrible distress for, for them. Uh, but on a grander scale, Jesus is saying, laying out what it will look like before he comes again. Uh, and he says, don't worry. It will get hard. It will get difficult. Uh, there will be a struggle. There will be people who turn away. There will be all kinds of things that are happening during this time. But then he says, God, the end will come. The end will come. The outcome will be good for those who follow Jesus. That's what we know. And you can put this into a microcosm of our own lives. We don't have to worry. Don't have to be afraid. Things are going to get hard. They're going to get hard in life, day to day, in and out. But our end will come and the end will be good. <laughs> the end will be good. And so we don't have to worry along the way. That's what Jesus is telling us. All this stuff is going to happen around us. Hang in there. Trust in me. I have good in store for you. Um, and we don't know. We don't know, but we want to be ready. We want to be ready for when the end does come. And so we want to be people who, who listen. We want to be people who listen, people who pray, but also pray according to God's will and not according to our wishes. Because our wishes are not always good for us. Um, 
like johnson gave me a plaque that says when god answers my prayers sometimes he says yes sometimes he says no and sometimes he says you've got to be kidding right uh you know uh, it's good that <laughs> that god doesn't always answer the prayers we want the way we want them answered <laughs> it wouldn't be good for us for us and so we trust we trust in what God has in store for us, and we know that it, it is it is for our our good, and we can trust and we can believe believe that. Um, and so we are we're living in the end times. So are the disciples. So are the generations that came after the disciples, the generations before us. Always want to be ready because we don't know when our day of salvation will come. It could be today. Our end could come. The Lord could come back. We just don't know, so we want to be ready. Watch and be aware. Watch and pray, as, as Jesus, uh, Jesus tells us. So, let's bow our heads to pray today. Source of all goodness and truth. Through your word, you promise to respond to our cries and answer our prayers. May our hearts and minds remain open to the varied ways in which you respond to us. May it always be that your will be done rather than our wishes be fulfilled. Lord, uh, we thank you that you hear our voice, our prayers. Uh, Lord, soften our hearts so that uh, we would be open to the possibilities of you working in, your li in our lives, even when we don't understand it, even when it's, sometimes it's hard to live as you would have us to live. Uh, but help us to trust that you want good for us and that as we pray, Lord, we pray that your will would be done and not just our wishes because our wishes are not always good for us and for the people around us. Uh, Lord, uh, today um, we pray that you would give us ears to hear. Uh, it's so easy as the world around us to not just listen to anyone, uh, to get stuck in our own head, to put in earplugs, to just being bombarded by so much noise. So give us ears to hear you, Lord, and what you're saying to us again today, that we need not be afraid, we need not worry, that we can trust in you completely and fully until that day uh, when the end will come, will come, just as you have promised. In that time, Lord, walk with us, be our guide, be our comfort, be our peace, our shalom, uh, knowing that in you, Jesus, things will be the way they were always intended to be, and we're grateful for that. As we learn, journey to the cross in this season of, Ad, of Lent, Lord, help us to have a humble courage as we go forward, uh, recognizing, Lord, what you have done for us, uh, but courageous, uh, knowing that, that you are victorious and that in you we are victorious as well. Uh, we pray for your people, Lord, for the Gorecki family, as I learned uh, the, earlier this week that Bob's sister Debbie passed away, I think, last week. So we pray for, for that family. Uh, we pray for, for Mary and her cancer struggles, uh, for Barb Glento, uh, for Tom as well. Remember Jerry and Jerry and their battle with old age and the bodies just falling apart, and yet we can trust in you, Lord that you have brought ultimate healing, right? Ultimate healing, not just for our bodies, but more importantly for our souls. Our bodies are going to fall apart. They're going to break down. They're going to die. But you have brought true and ultimate healing. And so we pray that for Jerry and Jerry, and that they would live in that uh, and trust in you, Lord, and your plan for their lives without fear, even in the ups and downs. For Tom and Judy, uh, Lord, as they continue their struggle, uh, we ask that you would be with them and uh, give them your presence and your peace. Uh, bless the day ahead of us, Lord, uh, and uh, we're just grateful for a new day. Uh, we ask your, your presence with us, uh, Lord, as we go about our day. Uh, we look forward to the opportunity to gather again this weekend to worship you. What a privilege it is uh, to be together in, in worship uh, as we are encouraged, as we seek to move uh, forward as, as, as your people here in this, in this place uh, with a humble, a humble courage. Uh, Lord, uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
All right, good to be with you guys. Enjoy your day. Uh, looks like it stopped raining. We'll see what happens. Uh, God go with you uh, and uh, go before you and behind you, and I'll see you this weekend. Have a great day. Bye-bye.